Galaxy's Most Wanted is still fresh in a lot of our hands and Fantasy Flight Games is not wasting any time in announcing a brand new hero that will be coming to us in July. I'm Dylan from All You Can Board and today we are talking about Venom and this is the Agent Venom version of Venom which is Flash Thompson as the alter ego. This is not the Eddie, Eddie Brock version which is uh, you know uh, usually a villain. Um, I imagine at some point in Marvel Champions we will see Venom, the Eddie Brock version, introduced as a villain but for now we have the anti-hero version which is a hero pack. So Lots of cool stuff going on in this pack, as we could have predicted um, even before they announced this. Um, it's very weapon-based, um, and it's really cool. A lot of things they're doing. I'm really excited for some of the cards that they're going to introduce, and there's some cool stuff in here that I think is going to even help out uh, previous heroes, specifically Rocket Raccoon, being that he's also weapon-based and has some tech um, you know, synergy and things like that. So let's jump right in and take a look at all the cards that were revealed. Let's start, of course, with the Alter Ego, Flash Thompson. He has a recovery of four, one higher than the average we normally see. His ability is you can control one additional upgrade that has the restricted keyword. Now, we're gonna see this again on the hero side. This is one of his mainstays, that this character, uh, this hero, um, can hold multiple restricted weapons. Um, well, I guess usually you can always hold at least two. He can hold three uh, baseline, which is awesome because his uh, weapons are obviously some of his strongest cards. So his other ability, is armed and ready which is during setup discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a weapon upgrade then add that card to your hand which means that you're not gonna have to worry about you know having a really bad start in hand or having to mulligan into a weapon and if you don't find one if you get really unlucky having a really bad start with venom his whole thing is to do with weapons and he's going to absolutely start with one right from the start in your hand that if you want to play you can and you'll have something in your arsenal to go which is really really cool I like that they include that as part of the setup you can have a little bit of a reliable start with them. Hit points are 12, a little bit higher than than you know some of the, the lower ones we've been getting in, in the last little bit. Um, so that's pretty good. Hand size is six, and we'll see on the other side it flips to five, so standard there. Um, but overall, really cool alter, alter ego. Nothing super, super flashy, but the setup is obviously a big, big deal. Um, and it's really neat that in this form, as well as Venom's form, you can control the additional um, restricted keyword. It would have been very tricky if on the hero form you could, but on the alter ego form you could not because then as soon as you flip, you would potentially have to discard a weapon. Um, that would not have been fun to do. So really good that they included on both. So let's jump into the hero side. The hero side is of course Venom. Um, Thwart of one, which is the only part I find interesting about that is that it is a pre-built justice deck that he comes with and his lowest base stat is his Thwart. Um, but his attack is two, his defense is two. Again, he can control one additional upgrade that has the restricted keyword and symbiotic bond is his ability. Resource, take one damage to generate a wild resource. So really, really good, especially because we'll see with uh, a lot of his cards, you want to be generating specific resource types. So having this one wild resource is a big deal and it's gonna help facilitate you playing those cards more effectively and efficiently without having to you know, play them for lesser abilities because you can't find the right symbols. So very, very cool. Again, hand size of five, hit points of 12. Overall, um, really neat that there's a resource ability on his hero card. I really enjoy that. Um, the stats are pretty, pretty good. Again, the thwarts are lower, but um, again, it's not just because he comes with a pre-built justice deck does not necessarily mean that's the one he's most efficient in or the one that you have to always play him in. And there are ways to remove threat that that thwart isn't necessarily, you know, too bad uh, of a number, especially because the, he also has ways to boost those numbers. So uh, don't don't read into that too much. Overall, I think that's a pretty solid hero and alter ego side. Um, nothing over the top amazing, but the restricted keyword is a pretty big deal. Okay, let's jump into Venom's hero cards. All right, kicking things off with Behind Enemy Lines. This is a two cost event card. It says hero action thwart. You can remove three threat from a scheme. If you paid for this card using only mind resources, also confuse an enemy. Very cool card, and again, this is one of the ones that ties into the fact that he can generate a wild resource from his hero side, which means that one of the two cost you will you can turn into a wild resource just by taking or turn into a mind resource just by taking a single damage. So you really only have to have another single mind resource card in your hand to, to actually meet this requirement, which makes it a lot easier to accomplish. Um, and again, being able to confuse an enemy on top of remove three threat is obviously a way big improvement. Um, three you can still remove three threat for two. It's not awful. Um, it's not over the top powerful. We've seen better versions of this card if you just use a baseline, but I could still see it being completely useful and played in that form if you 
you cannot find a way to get both mind resources. However, I think it'll be you know not too difficult to be able to pull that off. Overall, pretty cool card. Um, again, confusing. An enemy it doesn't even have to be the villain. It can be a minion. Um, it's really, really cool, uh, good to be able to deal with uh, an enemy by throwing a confused token on them and not have to deal with some huge scheme those potentially going to be coming in, especially if you're flipping to alter ego form at the end of your turn. Um, cool card, and I like that these cards tie in with his ability to generate wild resources um, and add those bonuses on top of it. Okay, let's talk about Grasping Tendrils. This is a really cool, really good two-cost event that's an interrupt, a defense event that you'll use on the villain's turn that says, when the villain initiates an attack against you, cancel that entire attack, and if you paid for this using only fist resources, you will also stun the villain. Super good. Again, because your ability um, on your hero card is to generate a wild resource, you really only have to have a single other card in your hand that can generate a fist resource to be able to pull off both effects on this card. So I don't think it's too difficult to pull off. And when you do, the fact that you're canceling an entire attack, not even having to defend, it just completely gets canceled and stunning the villain. That stun could prevent another attack on your, your teammate that's going to potentially get attacked next. It could protect, uh, protect against an attack that's coming on the next villain phase against you. It's so, so good. Um, again, really the only downside here, or not even downside, but the thing you have to keep in mind is that you're depleting your hand, um, potentially if you don't pay for this with the wild resource on Venom, which I, I would imagine you would. Um, you, you're depleting of three cards going into your next turn, which means you're going to be doing a little bit less. But if you have a bunch of weapons in play and things set up, it might not be a huge deal. Either way, very good defense event. I think there's a chance there might even be two of them uh, in the deck. We, we're looking at the numbers on the bottom of the cards. This is the third one in his deck. The next one we have revealed is uh, number five. There's a good chance we're seeing two Grasping Tendrils in the deck, which would be even better because you're going to get this more often and be able to really um, you know, stun the villain and prevent him from getting all those attacks in against you. So really, really cool card. Next up, Locked and Loaded. There's a single copy of this card, and it is a zero-cost event that says, search your deck for a weapon upgrade, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. Super simple. Um, I, you would have expected a card like this to be in here. You start the game with a weapon in your hand during setup. This is a card that's going to allow you to get another weapon. So, so much of Venom is reliant on him having his weapons in play, being able to utilize them, being able to uh, you know ready them again, get multiple uses per turn. Um, if you don't have weapons in play, Venom is having a huge setback in his game plan. So the fact that you start with one and the fact that they give you locked and loaded to be able to go search one out and thin your deck at the same time, a lot of what they want you to do is be able to get those weapons in play to use Venom to his full potential. I'm glad that this card is included. There's not, not a whole lot more to say about it other than that. I just, I'm glad it's there. I would have expected it to be there. We only get one copy, but again, it's just going to help you get into those weapons a little bit better. Okay, Run and Gun. This might be the most essential card that is revealed for Venom, or one of the strongest anyways. It is a three-cost event, hero action, ready Venom, and each weapon upgrade you control. This is obviously your big powerhouse card. As soon as you get into a situation where you have your max amount of restricted weapons in play, and you can do, you know, a bunch of damage with your weapons and potentially boost your basic attacks and do a bunch of damage there. Being able to ready everything and essentially get a second turn is the way you can almost look at it. If you're readying all your weapons with Venom and your hero, you're essentially getting a second turn of everything you want to accomplish besides the cards in your hand. So you're using most of your hand to play this, but you're just going all out. I love this card. I think it's going to be the, like the big facilitator of a lot of the stuff you want to do with Venom and you want to have those big swing turns and get a whole bunch done. Um, I'm glad they included something like this. It's obviously a little bit pricey at three, but it more than makes sense given the effect. You probably want to use this when you have your max amount of restricted weapons in play, the the, the full three. Uh, not that you can't use it at two, but if you only had one weapon in play for three costs, you're probably not getting the max value out of this unless you're in a pinch and you really need to do that. Either way, very cool card, um, very powerful card. I cannot wait to use it myself. Okay, let's finally talk about the weapon cards that come in Venom's specific hero cards. First one being Multigun. This is a three cost upgrade, restricted. Hero action, exhaust multi-gun, and choose one of the following three. Deal two damage to an enemy, choose a player and deal one damage to each minion engaged with that player, or remove two threat from a scheme. Now, the biggest thing I need to mention right at the top is that there are, there's no ammo with this weapon. There's no uses, it is infinite. So it's out there and you can use, use it as many times as you want. You're not taking charge counters off it like with Rocket. It is a weapon that you can just use whenever you want, which is a big deal because you're not having to manage ammo like you were with Rocket. You're not having to manage, you know, uses. It's just a weapon in play. As long as you have it ready, you can use it. Um, in terms of the abilities, tons of versatility here. Dealing two damage to an enemy is, is all, like, 
I mean, for something that you can use every single turn with no, uh, you know, no restrictions on ammo and potentially use multiple times in the same turn, it's great, a uh, great ability, not over the top in terms of damage, but still really good. Um, choose a player, deal one damage to each minion, engage with that player. We can basically just call this deal with Ultron. Um, if you have a, if you're playing against Ultron and you have a bunch of bots in play for for yourself or one of your teammates, just tr target that player and pick them all off. It's just a rapid fire version to, to uh, rapid fire way to, to pick all those bots off. Really good. Not the only situation you can use it in, obviously, but um, first one that came to mind. Um, and then of course remove two threat from a scheme. So the idea here is every single turn you're being able to do a couple damage, remove a couple threat, deal with a bunch of minions all at once, and potentially do these multiple times a turn if you're able to ready this weapon. Very powerful weapon, and again, the, the fact that you have no uses, no ammo on it, is a huge, huge deal, and that's consistent, something we'll see across all of Venom's hero-specific weapons. Okay, so Venom's Pistol. Now, there's two copies of this in the deck, and it is a one-cost upgrade that says, when you use one of Venom's basic powers, you can exhaust Venom's Pistol to increase that power by one for this use. So, again, you're not increasing that power for the entire round or anything, so if you have a way to, you know, uh, ready Venom and use it multiple times, it's not gonna affect all those. That being said, the idea here is to hopefully get both pistols in play and be able to boost your attack or thwart by two, or potentially be able to, you know, even do more if you get running gun in your hand and you're able to unexhaust them and use the, use them again you definitely want to try to get both pistols in you'll be every single turn doing uh four attack or three thwart whenever you want that's that's obviously huge and that's really what powers up venom and is the whole point you want to power up venom with his weapons to facilitate more possibilities and make him more powerful so uh very very good card it's you know not overly flashy, but again, the idea is for each of these weapons to be good, not amazing, but when they're all working together, when you have a bunch of them in play, it makes Venom amazing. They all power up Venom, and next thing you know, you have this super powerful hero that you're able to utilize every turn. So I'm really, really excited about this card, and I'm really excited to see how much power level it gives Venom when you have both of them in play. Okay, next up is a Justice card. Let's talk about this. So this is a three cost upgrade called Sonic Rifle. It is restricted and it comes with two charge counters and it does have uses on it. Um, it is a tech weapon, which is important. We'll talk about in a second. Hero action, exhaust Sonic Rifle and remove one charge counter. Uh, confuse an enemy, deal three damage to that enemy instead if it's already confused. So um, it's pretty cool that we're seeing a tech weapon, uh, another one added into the game that is part of one of the aspects, particularly because we just got Rocket introduced into the game and he uses tech weapons. So the more we have these introduced, the more possibilities it opens up for Rocket and keeps him fresh as well. So I like that this is Justice because Justice Rocket is something that, you know, it makes sense to at least try out and work in certain situations because of his ability to be such a great uh, dealer or he's so great at dealing with threat removal and, and things like that. So giving him a weapon specifically in the justice aspect is really cool. This obviously comes with Venom because it works with Venom as well. It's a pretty cool weapon. Um, it's it's expensive at three, but being able to reliably two times um, confuse an enemy or deal three damage, six damage, I guess, across both use if they're already confused. And the fact that Venom has ways to confuse the enemy as well means that you can do a lot of damage with this or you can continue to confuse an enemy and keep them at bay. I think it's a pretty good card. I don't know whether it'll be one that you necessarily always have to slot into Venom's deck or whether it's one you remove and replace for other things. And I I don't know how often he'll find it'll find its way into Rocket Justice decks, but the fact that it's a tech weapon and Rocket has specific ways to add more counters, I think that there is going to be a definite home for it. It's just going to be, uh, remains to be seen just how powerful it'll, it'll be, but I'm excited that they found another deck to introduce tech cards and tech weapons into, specifically because I was hoping there would be more opportunities unveiled for Rocket and we can continue to try to, to deck build in different ways with him. So very cool card for multiple reasons, not only for Venom, but again for Rocket as well. Okay, a basic card now, a zero cost upgrade called Side Holster, and they're pretty much, uh, besides the Venom cards, a lot of these cards are uh, really, really good for Rocket, it even has Rocket in the picture on this one. Uh, so play under any player's control, max of one per player. You can control one additional weapon upgrade that has the restricted keywords. So again, if you use this with Venom, who can already control three, you can now control four, which is Berserk. You're gonna have so many weapons in play, using them all, like, all the time, every single turn. You're gonna be super powerful, um, but with Rocket specifically, I'm really excited to be able to slot this in because he has restricted weapons and you can only have two in play and you 
they usually can last a long time because you're specifically adding more counters to them. And when they're done, again, you're using his ability to get rid of them. But the fact that you could, this will allow you to have three in play means that you can use his ability to draw more cards. You can be doing more stuff with them every single turn. You have less restrictions, obviously. So I'm really excited that they've added so many cards into Venom's deck that specifically help Rocket because those two both have such an attachment to weapon attachments. Um, that it's really neat they're kind of supporting each other. So I'm really, really uh, excited to try this card out in Rocket, and I'm really glad they introduced it. And as well, I think it's going to be a really cool addition to Venom's deck to really just put him over the top with all these weapons that he can have in play. Okay, so the last two cards are the Nemesis and the Nemesis side scheme, but there's a twist here and it's super cool. So there are actually four Nemesis minions and they're all copies of, the, of, of each other. And so at the start of the game, you'll set all four aside. And if you draw Shadows of the Past then you need to put it into play, you actually put all four into play engaged with you, which is crazy cool. Um, obviously very difficult. So they are all copies of each other. So there's technically only one, but there's just four copies of it. It is Enraged Symbiote. And it's also thematically really cool because the villain is sort of your inner demon coming back uh, to, to haunt you in a way. Like that's the thematics of it. It's obviously the symbiote. Um, so one scheme, two attack, two health, guard, and patrol. So while any of these are in play, you cannot thwart the main scheme, you cannot attack the villain. Yes, they only have two health, but there are four of them to contend with, and they all have boost icons so that afterwards, if they're shuffled back into the deck and they are used as for, uh, for the boost icon, they're also going to get thrown into play against you. So super, super cool. I love when they cool put uh, d um, interesting new twists on things we were already expecting with the, with like the Nemesis and different cards. So. I'm a big fan of this, and I think they'll be pretty tough to deal with. Yes, there are four of them, but also Venom does have a lot of ways to deal two damage specifically with his weapons, so you might be fine picking them off, but either way, it's a very, very cool mechanic, and it should be pretty tough. And that leads me into the side scheme, which plays off these as well. This is Clintar Frenzy, and it specifically says, threat cannot be removed from this scheme while a symbiote enemy is in play. And while this is in play, it gives you an extra encounter card. So again, there's you're gonna have four engaged with you. If you don't get rid of them all, you're getting dealt an extra encounter card. So very, very tough side scheme, unless you're able to deal with all of them. And even if you are able to deal with all the enemies, you also have to have enough cards and ways left to deal with the threat that's on here to get rid of it. So one way or another, there's probably a good chance you're gonna get dealt at least one extra encounter card. It just, I love when the side schemes for the nemesis, um, as well as the nemesis minion himself, um, is very difficult. I think that's the, the best thematics for it. It should be very difficult and hard to deal with. I really, really like this one. I think it'll be tough and that is just something I love to see from them. So very, very cool and should be a real challenge. So that's what we know about Venom so far. Overall, I am really, really excited about this. I like that they're including another weapon-based hero uh, after they included Rocket, but they've done it in a way that is that feels different. The, I, really, my only concern here is that having two weapon uh, uh, heroes come out so uh, close together and the fact that Venom seems really really powerful in terms of his weapons not having ammo not having charge counters and just being able to stay in play and do a whole bunch of stuff I'm wondering if one out of him or Rocket is going to overshadow the other and when it comes to wanting to you know being a person that says I really want to play with this weapon style of play are you always going to gravitate towards one of them because it's just a clear like clear favorite or, or clear power level increase or just more fun whatever the case may be uh, to play or are they both going to sort of fill their own niche and both be reliable in different ways um, it, it remains to be seen that's just my only thought when I first heard about Venom obviously the idea of playing with them both together and just having these two weapon based uh, heroes is really really cool as well and a lot of their cards are going to complement each other so very very exciting news that Venom is being introduced into the game I have a feeling this will be a very popular addition it's also very cool that it's the Agent Venom version and again I'm really expecting that at some point we will see the villain version of Venom It's just too popular for them not to include it um, it's just a matter of when we see him so very cool. This is another member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Beyond this, I'm really excited to see what else they introduce in terms of hero packs. And again, I, I've said it before, I feel like a lot of this stuff is leading up to another expansion box that is based on Thanos, not only because of different leaks and different things that have come out, that people have said that, you know, it's very much rumored and, and heavily implied that we're getting it, but also every single, I, I guess Venom doesn't have it, but most of the other Guardians of the Galaxy reveals have had mentions of Thanos and in Galaxy's Most Wanted in the storyline, Thanos is again mentioned. So I feel like that's something we're building to and that is obviously very exciting so that's venom thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and if we get any more announcements from fantasy flight games on more heroes um obviously i will cover those and otherwise i will see you in may when we get our brand new hero drops for the full reviews on those thanks for watching see you in the next one